Hi, it's me, Heinrich, and today I'm taking you on a journey called Sigma Notation. What is Sigma Notation? Sigma Notation is a shorthand instruction for us to add up a specific series of terms in a sequence. What does it look like? It looks like that. Now that funky looking symbol there is the Greek capital letter Sigma. And in math, it means to add up. So whenever you see one of those, it's kind of like having a Greek guy saying, I instruct you to add up. So we have a specific series of terms. Where does that come from? So it means we're going to start at the term generated when you substitute in four, and you're going to end at the term generated when you substitute in 10. So you're going to add up T4 plus T5 plus T6 all the way up until T10. How do we generate these terms? Well, we've got the function 2n minus 4. And that function is the function that we use to get the terms of a specific sequence. So that function is the function that we're going to be substituting into. So, let us do an example. There we've got the sigma from x equals 3 to 7 of 4x minus 3. What does that mean? It means we're going to add up from term 3, that bottom term there, all the way up until term 7, the number at the top. How do we get term 3? We substitute 3 into 4x minus 3. Term 4, we substitute in 4. Term 5, we substitute in 5. Term 6, 6. And term 7, 7. Now again, note, we start at term three and we substitute each sequential integer in until we get to term seven and then we just add them all up. Now, you can break one sigma into many and you don't even need Hulk strength to do it. Hulk smash! How does it work? So, We've got the, the sigma from x equals 1 to 7 for f of x. f of x is just a function, which means we add up term 1, term 2, all the way to term 7. So, that term 1, term 2, term 3 added together, that we can write as the sigma from x equals 1 to 3 of f of x. That term 4 is just f of 4, and term 5 plus term 6 plus term 7 is the sigma from x equals 5 to 7 of f of x. So there we've taken our first sigma and we've broken it down into different parts. So why am I showing you this? Sometimes in more complex problem solving examples, you need to be aware that you can actually play around with sigma. Does sigma notation link to any other area of work? Or is it one of those vacuums that have no application to anything in real life? Luckily, it does apply to other areas of work, and the area of work it links to is arithmetic and geometric series. How does that work? So, for arithmetic series, you know that s of n, which is the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series, has a formula. Now, interestingly, we can write that exact same thing in sigma notation, where we start at x equals 1, so term 1, we add up all the terms up until term n, and the function we use is the same function that we use to generate the terms of an arithmetic sequence. For a geometric series, you know that you can find the sum of the first n terms using that formula over there. And in the same way, we can link it to sigma notation, where you can write it as the sigma from x equals 1 to n of a r to the x minus 1. a r to the x minus 1 is the formula that we use in order to find each term in a geometric sequence. So note again that the, the function that goes next to that sigma is the formula that you use in order to generate each term of the sequence. So you can use S n if the question uses sigma. Why on earth would we do this? Well, for sigma, you need to go compute each and every term if you want to add it up the long way. So if we can use S of n instead of sigma, then we're actually going to take a little bit of a shortcut. 
So let's see, we've got the sigma there of x equals 5 to 11 of 3x plus 2. That 3x plus 2, our function, has a highest power of x that is equal to 1, which means we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. It's linear, straight line. That 3 there is what the x is multiplied by. So that means going from one term to the next, we're going to have a constant difference of 3. So d, our constant difference, is equal to 3. Then that x equals 5 tells us that the first term that we're going to be adding up is obtained by substituting 5 into our formula. So we substitute 5 into the formula and we get 3 times 5 plus 2 is equal to 17. So a is equal to 17. And then we need to find n, the number of terms that we're adding up. So we start at 5, we end at 11. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In other words, that is seven different terms that you're adding up. So n is going to be seven. So then we can just write the sigma using our formula for the arithmetic series. We found d, a, and n. Now we can just substitute in. And after that, we just fool around on our calculator and we get an answer. How easy was that? So, in summary, if you've got this funny looking sigma thing, that x equals a at the bottom means you're going to start by substituting a into f of x. That n at the top means you're going to substitute in sequential integers until you get to n. And then, once you have found all these terms, starting at a all the way to n, you're just going to add them all up. That's all from me. I hope that adds up.